In this lecture, you're going to learn about event binding in Angular. Event binding allows us to bind the web page events to a component's property or methods. Using event binding, we can pass data from view to component. So, using property binding and string interpolation, we can pass data from component class to view template. But using event binding, we can pass data from view template to component class. And event binding is used to bind HTML events to the property or method of a component class. Let's understand this with an example. So let's first go ahead and let's create a new component. And to create a new component, we can use ng generate command. And here we want to generate a component. And let's call this component search. Let's press enter and it should generate a search component for us. So you can see the required files have been created. If I open this source folder, if I expand this app folder here, we should have this search folder. And inside this search folder, we have all the files related to this search component. Let's open search component.ts file. So here we have this search component class and this class should be registered in the app module. So as you can see here, it is registered in the app modules. Now let's go back to our search component. Now in the view template of this search component, I want to add some HTML to display a text box in the web page. Okay. And in order to save some time, I have already written some HTML here. So let's copy this HTML from here and let's paste it here. Save the changes. And to design this view template, I have also written some CSS. So let's grab that CSS from here and let's paste it inside the search component.css file. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So it is not displayed here in the web page. That's because we have not used it anywhere. So let's go to search component.ts file. Let's copy this selector from here and let's use, in, use it as an HTML tag in the container component. So let's go to the HTML file of this container component. And after this app notification, let's use this search component. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now this text search and this text box has been displayed in the web page. Now let's understand event binding. So let's go to VS code and let's go to our search component dot ts file so let's close these files here and let's open search component.ts file and inside this search component class i want to create a property let's call this property search value and it is going to be of type string and to this for now let's assign empty string now what i want is whenever a user enters some text in this text box I want to assign that text to this search value property. So here we want to get the data from the web page and we want to assign that data to this search value property. That means we want to get the value from our view template and we want to use it in our component class and we can achieve this using event binding. So let's see how to do that. Now, Whenever a user will enter some text in this text box, an input event will happen. And when that input event happens, we can execute some code. Okay, so basically here we want to handle the input event of this input text box. For that, let's go to VS code. Let's open search component.html file. And we want to handle the input event on this input element. So here we can use event binding and to use event binding first we use a set of parentheses and inside this parentheses we specify the event name which we want to handle. Here we want to handle input event and when this input event happens we want to do something. So to this we can assign any TypeScript expression. So here when this input event happens let's say we want to call a method and let's call this method change search value and let's go ahead and let's create this method 
and we need to create this method inside the search component class. So here, let's create this method. Now, remember that whenever an event happens, it emits some event data. That means whenever this input event will happen, it will emit some event data related to that input event. And that data will be passed to this method as its argument. And the argument is dollar event. So this dollar event stores the event data related to that particular event. Now, since we are passing this argument to this change search value method, let's receive that data in this method. So here, let's specify a parameter. Let's call it maybe event data. And for now, let's specify its type as any. And let's go ahead and let's log this event data in the console. For that, let's use console.log statement and let's log event data. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console. Let's clear everything here. And let's type something inside this text box. So when I type T, you can see that an event has been raised and that event has been logged in the console. If I type something else, if I type E, again, the event has been raised. So the type of the event is input event. So this input event has been raised and that has been logged in the console. If I type S again, the input event will be raised. And since we are logging it, it has been logged in the console. Now, if I expand this event, this event will have a target property. And if I expand this target property, it will have a value property. So this target is basically the input element on which we are handling this input event. In this case, this target is nothing but this input element. Okay, and this input element will have a value property which will store the value user is entering in the text box. Right, so let's go to our TypeScript class. And here we know that now the data type of this event data is event. So let's specify that. And we know that this event data has a target property which stores the target element. And on that, it will have a value property which will store the value entered in the text box. Now, this target is of type HTML input element because this target is storing this input element, right? So, the type of this target is HTML input element. Okay, so we need to typecast it. And let's wrap this complete thing here. And on that HTML input element, let's call this value property. So let's save the changes now. Let's go to the web page. Let's clear everything. And now whatever value I will enter in this text box that will be logged in the console. So if I enter T, that has been logged in the text box. I mean in the console. If I enter E, so TE has been logged in the console. If I enter S, TES has been logged in the console. If I enter T, so TEST has been logged in the console. So whatever value we are entering in this text box that we are receiving inside this value property of this target property. So now what we want is, we wanted to assign the value entered in this input inside this, you know, inside this text box to this search value property. And we have that value inside this expression. So let's assign this expression to this search value property. So here, let's say this dot search value and to this Let's assign the value which we have inside this value property. And let's comment this console.log statement. And in this way, we are passing data from the view template to our component class. And for that, we are using event binding. So whenever a user will enter some text in this text box, this input event will happen. And when this input event will happen, it will call this method. When this method will be called, uh, we are passing the event data to this method. So we are receiving that event data inside this event data parameter. Then from this event data, we are getting the value which the user has entered in the text box. And then we are assigning it to this search value property of this search component class. So from view template, we have passed data 
to the component class. Okay. Now let's say we also want to display the data, the data stored in the search value property in the web page. Let's go to the HTML file of the search component. And after this input element, let's add a span. And here, let's say we want to display you searched for and then double quotes like this. And inside this, we want to display the value which the user has entered in the text box. And we have that value stored inside this search value property. So let's copy that. Let's paste it here. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's close this console here. So initially it is displaying you searched for and then the empty string. That's because initially this property is assigned with empty string, right? Now let's type something here in this text box. So let's say iPhone and you can see that iPhone has been displayed here. If I type something else, let's say mobile, you can see that has been displayed here. So whatever value we are typing inside this text box that is being assigned to this search value property and then we are displaying that value here using this span and that has been displayed in the web page. Okay. So in this way, using event binding, we can pass data from view template to our component class. Let's understand event binding with another example. So here we are displaying this notification div. So whenever a user visits this web page, he will see this notification div. Now I want to provide an option to close this div. So here we want to have a close button for this div. And whenever the user clicks on that close button, we want to hide this div from the web page. Let's see how to do that. So for that, first we need to add a button to this div element. Let's go to VS Code. Let's close this search component here and let's open our notification component and let's go to notification component.ts file. So this is our view template for notification component. Now here I want to add a button inside this div. In order to save some time, I have already written that HTML. So let's copy that HTML and let's paste it after this text. Okay, so this is a very simple HTML here. We have a div inside that div we have this button and the value for this button is x so this x will be displayed in the inside this uh, notification div now let's also style this div for that let's copy this css and let's specify it in this styles array so after this closing double quote let's use comma and let's specify our style for this close div Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you can see a close button has been displayed. Now, whenever a user clicks on this close button, this div should disappear from the web page. So here we want to handle click event. So whenever this button will be clicked, this div should disappear from the web page. Let's see how to do that. In order to do that, on this button, we are going to bind click event. So to bind an event, we use a set of parentheses like this. Then we specify the event name. So event name here is click. And now to this, let's assign a TypeScript expression. So here, let's assign a method to this. And let's call this maybe close notification. Okay. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Whenever an event happens, it raises some event data. So when this click event will happen, it will also raise an event data. And that data we can pass using dollar $event variable. Okay. But since we are not going to use this data in our close notification method, we can also omit it because it is an optional parameter. Okay. So it's not mandatory to pass that dollar $event to the method. All right, now let's go ahead and let's create this method. So after this property, let's create this close notification method. And inside this method, all we are going to do is we are going to set the value of this display notification property to true. 
So remember from our previous lecture that here we have this hidden property and to this hidden property we are assigning the value of this display notification property. So if the value of this display notification property is false, in that case this div will be displayed in the web page. And when the value of this display notification is true, in that case that true will be assigned to this hidden property and this div will not be displayed in the web page. So initial value of this display notification is false. So false will be assigned to this hidden property and that's why this div is visible in the web page when we initially load it. But let's say when the user clicks on the close button, at that time we want to set the value of this display notification to true. For that let's say this dot display notification to true. And when the value of this display notification will be true, that will be assigned to this hidden property and it will hide this div element from the web page. Okay, let's see that. Let's save the changes now. Let's go to the web page. So let's reload the web page here. So initially when the page loads, this notification div is displayed in the web page. Now let's click on this cross button. So when I click on this cross button, you can see that has been disappeared. So when we click on that cross button, the click event will happen. When this click event will happen, this method will be called. And when this method will be called inside this method, we are setting the value of this display notification to true. So the value of this display notification is true. That has been assigned to this hidden property. And since the value of this hidden is true, it will hide this div. Okay. So I hope with these two examples, now you understand how the event binding works in Angular. If you have any question related to event binding, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.